Luke, I'm your father. I thought I told you to do your chores. No, Dad, I don't want to kill all the good guys. I just want to make quilts. Um, Rob, you know the cameras are rolling. Whoops, looks like I was goofing around a little bit too long as the camera started rolling. Welcome back to Man Sewing. I've got a very special Wookiee for a guest today as we roll our way through our awesome action figure toy keeper. This is going to be so much fun. And of course, you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan and I just can't say enough great things about this Camelot fabric they came out with. I mean, this print is so fun and cool. There's all kinds of little scenes. And of course, my favorite, Boba Fett is right there. And I think he's even hiding out back here for us. So he approves as well. But let me get you started on this because I could goof around with my action figures all day if you let me. Now, you're going to start with a yard of each. So I've got kind of their busier all over comic print here from Star Wars. And then also I'm going to use a relatively subtle print or quiet, but still thematic Star Wars print here. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually laying these out to start cutting. So I'm going to line them up real nice. Cause the first thing we're going to make is our straps that we use to tie our action figure holder to the door or hang it from a coat hanger or something fun. So I'm going to work for just a second and get things as organized as possible. I'm going to make all of these cuts at once. So it doesn't matter exactly the sizes you're making as long as what you make, you make the same. Okay. And what we're going to have with our yards worth of fabric here is basically enough to make two of these because we're just going to use one of the 22 inch sides here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to trim up an edge. And I'm trimming up both edges. So I'm looking here and I'm not left-handed. So I'm going to do this real carefully, <laughs> not carefully enough. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Good clean cut. Now the next step, we're going to cut two inches off to be the ties. And that's going to be from each side or each print, I should say. So I'm just lining up my ruler here for my two inch cut. Just like that. Okay. And now before we put these ties together, let's take a second and finish this off as well. So I'm just going to slip it out of the way and I'm going to get prep the batting. And I just need a single layer. And I want it to be the exact same size. Okay. So I'm just kind of looking at this. See if I can maximize as much as possible. Always can use good scraps. Okay, here we go, coming along. Boy, by the time I finish this, you'll think it took me almost as long to build that second Death Star, right? So here we go. Okay. Now, grab your ruler again, and we can just pull from this side over. We're gonna cut. And I'm going to trim just a little bit off the top just to make sure everything's the same size. Like I said, it doesn't matter what size. They'll probably finish about 32 inches by 22 inches. Okay. Now that's a scrap. So I can cut that off there. Let me get that out of our way. Now I'm going to spin this. Watch this trick. Okay. This is for light speed cutting. Folding it in half this way. And I can still see the fabric that's in there. I'm not sure if you can with our cool overhead camera or not, but I'm just going to fold that. I'm cutting the selvages off first. And that's a bit of a fold. So I had to put a little extra muscle into that. Maybe I could add like Java leaning on my cutter if I needed him to spin that around and making sure I'm cutting at least that fold of both layers of the fabric and my batting. So you can see my rulers clear. A little extra pressure again. Gosh, Julie, I should have had you do that for me. I'm feeling a little weak today. All right. So now that is made and these, we're only going to need one of our print. Okay. And we're going to want one of our comic, let's say. So we're gonna have one of those. We'll use this one here. Okay, so now we need to get these prepped for our quilting. So we're going to, I should say our stitching. We're gonna go like this, 
lay this all back out because we're going to do this just like a pillowcase. We're going to sew these right sides together, but I want to catch as much of my batting in the side. So I'm just taking a little extra second to get it organized there. Now, technically what I'm using here is a fusible batting. So once I get this piece organized, I can hit it with my iron for just a second to help everything not shift around. Okay. So we're going to do that before we put the second piece on. Okay, now before I really prepare this sandwich, I just want to point out I've set the other two sides of the fabric to make another toy keeper aside. Okay, those are down there. And I've got my sandwich, which is actually one print, the second print, keeping sure that the directions are running the same direction. And then I also have my batting underneath there. Remember, we're going to stitch these things right sides together. But before we can stitch them, we need to put our ties in. So let me just slide this out of the way real quick and show you how I did those. Now, for your ties, it's pretty simple, and I've got a cool tutorial or a quick tip out there on man sewing where I show you how to make tubes of all different sizes. So like I always do, I take my ball of twine, and I'm not worried about my selvages. Those are gonna get stitched into the, the project this time. I will take my safety pin, and I'm gonna lay that in here. Prepare to stitch that with a quarter inch seam allowance with my right sides together. And like you've seen in the other tutorial, when I'm done, I'll pull the cord and that will turn these tubes out. And what you're gonna end up with is basically a, what was a 44 inch cut down. So now I need two different sets of ties, one from each fabric, because I just thought that would be fun to do. Now, point out again, I have stitched, tucked in, and all of that, the raw edge of all four of the ties, but I've also left a raw edge exposed on the other side because I don't need to do that work, right? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into the, into the toy keeper. So now I'm putting my nasty ends together and my nasty ends together down there. And if you want to be really organized, make sure your seams are together and your seams are together, okay? Now, those are going to go at the top of our keeper. Let's spin these out. And I know I'm at the top because I can see the direction of the print. And we're going to drop this down. And I'm going to take these. Remember, that's the unfinished edge that's going in. And let's just bring these in a couple of inches from the edge. So one, two, three over there. And you can even let that tail hang up just a little bit to make sure you capture them while we're sewing because it's going to be blind. So we're going to take one pin and we're going to put it down there a little way so we're not in the way of the presser foot later. Okay. So I'm holding that one there. Get my next pin ready. Coming over here from the edge. One, two, three. I've got that dialed in. And go ahead and pin that down here a ways. Now here's the next trick because these are going to go everywhere they want. So let's take these, set them in the center, and put one more pin through all of that just to make sure nothing gets away while we're sewing. Okay? Now, I'm going to make sure that this gets nice and organized. I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to leave an opening like we do with, if we're making a pillow. And I'm going to begin sewing around this with about a quarter inch seam allowance. If your fabrics aren't totally lined up, you could take a little bit bigger seam allowance. So maybe I'll do that just to see what happens with that today. There we go. So, oh, and here's another fun trick. I'm going to stitch, stitch this with my prints or my fabrics against the feed dog so I don't get as much stretching or torquing of the material. And are you ready? This is going to be great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a few stitches. I'm going to back stitch because I'm going to be pulling all that fabric back out through this opening. Drop that needle as I come around the corner. Not worried about the batting. I'm actually looking at my fabric here. Batting will stretch a little if you're not careful. And chewy. Here we go. Light speed. Hit it.
Okay, making the jump out of light speed. Here we go. We're coming into that last little edge and I'm just going to go ahead and do a little back stitching. Lift my needle up. Now, when you put your hand in here to turn all of this right sides back out, be very careful because you have that pin up there in the middle. Now I can see it right here, so I'm watching out for that. And then you also have those pins holding those straps. So we're just going to roll this out slowly and carefully. And of course, we don't want those pins to snag. If you feel anything binding or snagging, just stop and see what the disaster may be. Very, very cool. Now, I like to top stitch all my projects like this, so I'm going to run a layer of stitching around the edge once I finish unpacking these corners and everything. That's going to be another real easy step. Just lay my presser foot out along the edge of my seam. But that top stitching will close that bottom, so I like to start down there. So as I'm getting ready for that top stitching, I'm just going to roll this down with my fingers. Before I stitch it though, I'm going to just kind of give it a, a good hand press here. You could always hit it with your iron. I'm just going to top stitch around that edge and then I'm going to prepare the marking that will go to help put our vinyl in. So let me get this top stitched and chalked right out and then I'll come back and explain how that chalk's going to work for us. All right, well, welcome back here. We've got all of our top stitching done all the way around, right? And that, let me show you, also has finished that bottom. That was where I was able to turn the right sides back out. Now we want to go ahead and start marking for our pockets. So as we're getting ready to mark for our pockets, I have pre-chalked all of this. And, oh, look at this. Thanks, art department. We have a really cool template, so you can just print that right out. And that is the measurements I'm going to walk you through here in just a second, okay? And that's the measurements for making our pockets using our vinyl. So the first thing I did is I took a nice line with my chalk and my ruler and I marked across the bottom but one inch up from that seam allowance, okay? From that line to the next line is seven inches. We're making a five inch pocket with a two inch gap. So from here to here is seven inches. And then every row I came up and I made four rows or four sets of pockets. They're always gonna be seven inches apart, okay? Then just find your center. You can actually do that by folding it and pressing it. That makes life real easy. And then once you've got that, you're gonna chalk your vertical lines. And then from there, it's just three inches apart. And you're gonna build it so you have just enough for about six pockets in each side. So three marks on either side. And don't forget to mark the end because that's actually where we're going to um, need to know where we're at as we're getting started with our vinyl. Now, the vinyl itself is awesome. It's a premium quilters vinyl. So this is kind of what it looks like here in the packaging. Try not to ripple that around too much in front of the microphone. It'll sound like thunder and lightning outside, right? But I've already opened up a pack. Now this stuff is 16 inches wide by one and a half yards. So what we're gonna first do is take the entire one and a half yards and I kind of try to fold it backwards from the way it was rolled so that the roll was working in my favor. And it's gonna be a bit of a wrestling match for just a second here because it just came out of the package. So you might want to actually take yours out of the package before you even start watching this tutorial. Huh? Of course, however, how you're gonna pull that one off, I'm not sure. <laughs> and I'm just going to lay my ruler over here. I'm just checking my edges. You probably can't see because it's such a clear vinyl. You probably can't see the fold, but I can barely see it. And then I'm going to set that right over here. We're just going to trim a little bit off, maybe a quarter inch. I've got these cool grip strips on the bottom of my ruler and it's sticking to my vinyl, helping me hold on to it nice. So I'm going to slice it there. And now I'm just going to literally make my next cut just one row at a time, but I'm gonna do this so I have four strips. So you're gonna get three strips out of each section. These are gonna be five inch wide strips. So fold it again. Making sure my edges line up nice there. And let's go this way. And unfortunately, I'm running out of Star Wars jokes. My, in my head, I'm thinking of Harry Potter and his cloak of invisibility, which is what I feel like I'm dealing with right now, right? But you can tell I just love those shows. I guess it's the benefit of having a 12-year-old at home that loves watching that stuff as well. Okay, so there it is. I think I'm good. 
Now I'm gonna cut a strip of this. So this will be a five inch wide by about 24 inches, I guess, across. Because it was, oh, excuse me, 54, so it's 27. I actually know that. So you're basically gonna end up with six strips like this out of your entire package of vinyl. You need four for the project. And we're gonna prepare to stitch this. What I do now is I find the center point again. I'm gonna put a nice crease in that. And that center point I'm gonna to stitch to my center line first. Then I'm gonna to go to the edge and I'm gonna stitch the edge and that's supposed to create that ripple and that ripple is what becomes my pockets. So here we go. Get myself nice and organized here. I'm gonna move my needle back to my center position. Drop that presser foot. Make sure you're doing your back stitching as always here. The vinyl's real easy to sew through. Although some vinyls, you might want to take a little bit larger of a stitch allowance so you're not perforating it. That's not going to be a problem with this stuff, but if you're using some older vinyl or something, maybe something that's getting brittle. So I'm going to stitch through here, then I'm going to back stitch. Put my needle in the up position. Now I can come over here to the end and I'm just gonna give about a half of an inch overlap from that first, that last chalk line I made. Drop her down, stitch. Now, watch where my hands go. I'm lining up my vinyl along that bottom chalk to make sure that everything stays nice and crisp as I'm sewing these lines. It's gonna help keep everything nice and parallel and perpendicular, looking really sharp when it's done. So I'm gonna get that back stitch in there and here we go. and a back stitch at the top. Now that that side's done and you've got your loops forming, here, now I'm just gonna kind of split the difference. And I want all three of these to be a pocket. So now I'm just gonna work my way through till it looks about like that. There is no science to this part of it. Just a little good old fashioned Cross your fingers and hold your breath sewing here. And if you can't backstitch because your hands are full, did you see I just held the fabric in place so it actually made a backstitch without me uh, moving forward or touching any buttons? And a good backstitch at the top. The backstitch at the top is so important because that's where our hands are always digging in to the holder to get our action figures in and out of. And the last one, let me show you that again, I'm just folding that over, making sure it looks even. Drop that down. Hold that in place for my back stitch and now I can get my hands free. Now I'm gonna race through the other side. Let's take a minute and get any of our jump stitch threads out of the way, both on the front and on the back. We can tr tidy them later. I just don't want them reaching from one side to the next because I don't want to cause any additional ripple or pucker. So I've got those all free and loose now. Now this next step, oh, there we go. Now with this next step, I am literally just gonna feed this into the sewing machine. And as I'm sewing, I'm gonna just be folding this with my hands and folding it with my hands as I go. And I'm just gonna fold it in the direction which makes it easiest for the machine to go over. They give it a lot like your skateboarding, right? You'd rather go up the ramp than hit straight into the curb. So as I start to go down here, I'm just gonna run the edge of the presser foot along the edge of my vinyl. And I'm pre-folding it. I'm just trying to get that crease about in the center. Let's give a good back stitch. Okay, and I'm just gonna go all the way from one end to the next. Ramp versus curb. Down there. These are so fun to make. I've actually made several of them. <laughs> My son loves them. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out here. 
as we're going. All right, so how cool is that, right? So there's the first row, and now I'm gonna just zip out into light speed again and come back with all of them done. Ready for that? Okay, so here you can see it's all finished up. So we've got all four rows of the vinyl on there, six pockets in each. So that's gonna hold 24 action figures like my favorite Wookiee here. Oh, sorry about that. Now, when we're ready for cleanup, we're just gonna fold this up from the bottom, come all the way to the top, right? And then you can just take it and tie it on up so you're all set. So this Wookiee and I will be seeing you in a galaxy far, far away or right here at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.